Using a LUT is one of the easiest ways to make your Unreal Engine visuals look more cinematic and just better. But where do you get good LUTs? How do you use them and what's the catch? In this video I'll walk you through everything you need to know. Welcome to Unreal Arc Wizard everyone and let's dive in. There are a few limitations when working with LUTs, but before we get into it, let's get our hands on some great ones. I recommend LUTs from Color Grading Central, it's just that as far as free LUTs go, this is really one of the best options out there. I'll put a link to it in the description, here you just go to download, enter your email address and the pack will be sent to your email. Later on in the video I'll share with you my favorite professional LUTs that I find absolutely stunning. Once you download your CGC pack, just unzip it, inside you will see a version for macOS, and another one for Windows and in here you can find all of the LUTs. All of them are in cube format, this is exactly what we need. If you try to drag and drop it into Unreal Engine, you will see the following error. So we will need to convert those cube files into so-called HALT CLUTs. You can convert it using many different programs. In this tutorial we will be using Photoshop and there are two ways we could go about it. The first one we will just convert the LUT, nothing else. To do it, we need to download the so-called neutral texture. This is official documentation from Epic about lookup tables. I will leave a link to it as well in the description. If you scroll down, we will find this link in here. This is a neutral color loot. Let's click on it, also unzip it. Inside of it, we will find one PNG texture. Let's open it in Photoshop. First, let's go to image, mode and switch to 16-bit channel. Then unlock the background layer. Now let's add adjustment, color lookup. Click here to load one and click again. Now let's find the CGC LUTs that we have downloaded. And in here, let's just choose anything. As you can see, it has applied changes to the texture. Now we just need to go to save a copy and just save. Let's go back to Unreal Engine and now we can drag and drop it into the content folder. Open up your post-process volume, scroll down to to color grading miscellaneous and here color grading LUT you can drag and drop it into the slot you can also find it in the search but as you can see it came kind of weird there are some artifacts in there this is because we need to change two things in the texture settings double click on the LUT on the right side under MIP gen settings switch to no MIP maps under texture group switch to color lookup table and click save. Now the LUT looks way more cleaner. If it's too much, you can adjust its intensity in here. Okay, that was nice. But what if I want to have more control over it? What if I want to make more adjustments, increase the shadows, maybe even use multiple LUTs or even camera row? Let's see how we can do that. Delete my post-process volume and add a brand new one. Under details, I will disable auto exposure, so set it to manual and disable physical camera exposure. Then search for infinite extent and enable it. Set my exposure compensation around a value that feels good. I also like to make sure that Bloom is disabled, as well as uh, Lens Flares. If I really want to keep them, I will add them later. Now let's make a screenshot. You can find it here. Click Capture. By clicking here, you can quickly navigate to the folder where it was saved to. Let's open it in Photoshop and make the adjustments that we want. So for example, I decreased exposure, added a bit of contrast, added levels, and a bit of vibrance. Now we could add color lookup the same way we did it before. From here, load, load the lookup table, and it works. But it's kind of annoying that you need to click so many times just to switch between different lookups. Let me show you a quicker way. Basically what I want to do is for my new LUTs to appear in this drop down menu. How do I do it? I have to navigate to my Photoshop folder, then go to Presets, then 3D LUTs. If you're using Mac, this is the location you need to look for. And in here I will create a new folder and call it CGC LUTs. I will find the LUTs that I want to copy. So for example, all of these, I'll paste it in here. Another tip, I also want them to appear one next to each other. So I will add a prefix to their name. I use a free program called Bulk Rename. And in here you can add a prefix CGC LUT like this, click on rename. Now all of them have the name that I want. Now we will have to restart the Photoshop. After the restart is done, all of the LUTs that we have added will appear in the drop down menu in here. What I like to do is just to select the first one and then with a wheel scroll on my mouse, I would scroll it one by one and really quickly preview all of the LUTs 
I have available. I do like this one, so let's just keep it, but set it to something like 50%. And just for the sake of it, let's add another lot. Let's lower the percentage. So here is the before, here is the after. Now let's open our neutral texture again, do the same thing switch mode to 16-bit, unlock the layer, then select all of the adjustments we have added in here and paste it to the neutral texture. Now go to file, save as copy, drag and drop it into Unreal, open it up, no meep maps, texture group, color lookup, save. Let's go to post process, scroll down to color grading, miscellaneous, color lookup, and let's add it to the post process volume. So here is a before, here is the after. Here is the same scene in Unreal and in Photoshop. But that's not the only thing we can do. We can also work with camera roll. Right click on the layer and convert our screenshot to a smart object. Switch on camera roll filter. Let's do something really crazy just so we see the difference. Click OK. Now I'll press Ctrl C to copy this layer. Open my neutral texture, press Ctrl V to paste it in here, convert my neutral texture to a smart object, then hover over camera raw filter, press Alt and hold, drag and drop camera raw filter on my neutral texture. Delete my layer, and as you can see in here, it added the adjustments that I made in camera raw, and I will do the same and save it as a copy. Now, when I bring it to Unreal and drag and drop it into the LUT slot, you can see that the same adjustments I made in Photoshop in the camera raw filter came into Unreal. And this is really amazing, especially for me. I work with Camera Raw a lot and, and having the ability to bring it to Unreal is just great. At this point, what I would do is set my priority of the post-process volume to minus one, rename it into post-process volume LUT and add a new one to the scene. So if I want to add bloom to the scene, or flares or make any further adjustments to the look, I would do it in the second post-process volume. And because we set the priority to minus one, this one will override the first one. Remember I told you there was a catch when using LUTs? In simple terms, there are two main limitations relevant to us. First of all, you can't really use LUTs if you are using ACES pipeline, using ASIO for example. If you don't know what it is, ACES is a color system used in movies and TV to make sure that the colors look the same no matter where they are displayed. If you try to render your scene using any color transforms, the LUT will be simply ignored. There is apparently a workaround with a volume texture. I have not tried it myself, but I will leave a link to the tutorial in the description description for those who want to give it a try. The second limitation is basically if you do this in any studio making AAA games, there is a high chance you will be yelled at. You see, the problem is LUTs happen in LDR or low dynamic range and big studios are moving towards HDR or high dynamic range. If you're using LUTs, your scene might look different on HDR displays. And this inconsistency is just simply something that big studios are trying to avoid. So what's the conclusion? Should you avoid using LUTs altogether? Well, if you're not working in a big studio and you don't render using ACES, then it's most probably fine. But if you are, you can still use LUTs for achieving a quick look, but you will have to recreate that look using color grading tools. Now let me show you some of my favorite professional LUTs that I find absolutely stunning. The first on my list are LUTs from Film Riot. They have many different packs. My favorite are cinematic LUTs. So for example, cinematic LUTs version seven. This pack counts, for example, at 47 years. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of them. I just generally think they look pretty good. They do have one free option, the Batman LUT. The second website I want to show you is Motion Array. Under LUTs, you can search here for very different packs. They also have two free options. Another favorite of mine is a pack from Juan Melara, precisely the Film Unlimited pack. It comes at $20 if you just need the LUTs, at $100 if you need LUTs and power grades. He also has some other cool packs as well. Last but not least is Cullen Kelly's The Voyager pack. It comes with two options, $79 or 129 if you also need the power grades. If you care about the aesthetics of your animations, chances are you will also want beautiful clouds to be in them. If so, check out this video of mine where I show you how to animate beautiful clouds for free in different weather conditions. See you there. Ciao.